Hello everybody and welcome to Vicky Patterson The Secret 2. This week I'm joined by Irish mega babes, pop <laughs> legends, and one half of my favourite girl band ever. It's Sinead and Adele from Bewitched Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that was, was a very great nice intro. That was brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much, Les, as well. Honestly, um, I am absolutely buzzing like an old fridge to have you on today. I'm mm -hmm. a ma massive, massive fan. Really? Um, it's so funny. Oh, my God. Like, the Irish Invasion. How old are you, I Vicky? How 35. You? So you were wow. probably 10 or something when Sailor V, you know, came out. Yes. Well, I just had that very Ooh. depressing statistic this morning. <laughs> I can't no, believe it. In it, mate. Like, I can't believe mm. it's 25 years old. What the fuck? Why do you yeah. still only... Why do you still only look like you're in your twenties as well? <laughs> That's the filters on Zoom. They're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what it is? Oh, it's mental. God. Like I don't even like talking about the twenty-five year thing because it just makes everyone seem so old. But yet, that's <gasps> the kind of reason why we're about. It's like, can we stop saying that? It's I know. Mad. I know. Do you know what though? Like I didn't believe it was that long. Like I don't feel that old, and you still look fucking mm. great. So I wouldn't that's even so worry about it too much. I'd wear it like a badge of honor. Like twenty-five yeah. years. 25 years and still going strong in the industry. I think that's actually something to be proud of rather than something to be, you know, beating myself up over. Yeah, I know. Nice. I mean, crazy. if somebody told me like in when I'm nearly 50 that I'll be still on stage in a pair of heels <laughs> jumping around to say, Levy, I'd be like, hey, seriously, sorry, what? <laughs> Not a second, should it? Because can we just circle back? You're nearly 50. Yeah, Not this me. year is my big 5-0. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's no. crazy. No. <laughs> no. Sure. I actually, I, I actually just don't believe that. So I'm kind of concerned because so so Idel is what 45. So she's like, if you're 43. Still doing a, oh, oh God, sorry. Thank you. Oh, I just God, like sorry. that band <laughs> split up. It splits. <laughs> so it's like, does that mean then when you're 50, that makes me nearly 57? Am I still going to be jumping around then? I'm like, no. I can't cope. Yeah. Well, ha well, that is a good question though because obviously, question. <laughs> obviously, our chore choreography was pretty high energy, mate. Like, yeah, I, I, I just wonder as the years have advanced, have we had to adjust that slightly for our knees and joints in general? Yeah. Or are you still you know giving what? it ten now? For me, <laughs> we have an uh, yeah, a little bit for today. She's got like frozen shoulders. So anytime we go, let's do this arm up here. She's like, can we stay down? I can't like, do that okay. arm. She's like a T Rex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I'm just like do you know what it's a bit of both it's probably like you know we were looked like we were just on helium all the time in those dance routines and so it's kind of nice you know to bring it bring the energy down a little bit make it a little bit cool and like look after my you know frozen shoulder thing that's kind of creeping in and you know all those things that are happening so it's a bit of both also, well it's weird because sometimes like we have to sort of well we feel like we have to revisit the old routines to a point hmm. because people are kind of waiting for those bits but we did they're your crowd relief. pleasers aren't they yeah but then we did comic relief the other week and when you watch it back you think Oh God, some of it does look a bit aged. Maybe we shouldn't be feeling that way. And it's like, leave that behind. Come in a different it. angle. I think like either, it's honestly, either way. I mean, I've just listened to your new song there, Birthday, and it's absolutely class, lasses. And it's, you should be so proud of it. You've rolled with yeah. the punch, you know, rolled with the punches, brought something new and exciting. Like, I love that. But also, I don't think your stuff, I think it's aged great. And like, whenever I hear sort of, any of your sort of older stuff. Like I just literally was Googling your greatest hits because you've I forget how many years I've had, you know? You absolutely smashed it. It's like lovely to have a mix of like your new, exciting, fresh stuff. And also like the proper crowd pleasers that I grew up listening to and that people like yeah. sort of really recognize and know you for. So no, I never feel like like it's dated. If anything, I think it's iconic. It's not even the song. Yeah. I think it was the like the routines when you look at the routines, like everything has changed. So we do get into the studio and kind of look at things a little bit. I feel like we need another little revisit. But we're yes. so lucky. I feel like we are lucky every time we gig. We've got the four number ones. So before yeah. we even start, you know, 15, 20 minutes there is an absolute classic. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, oh, now I've lost. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this really this really is a, a true... We're, we're, a truly be bewitched bag. and their and, and their magic you know we're just kind of you know we're really witches so you know we're just <laughs> dipping in and out of this luck <laughs> i feel like it's almost like i've only paid to have one of you so i'm just getting it's like a rolling cameo thing type <laughs> um i'll wait for her to come back i've got loads of lovely questions for you sport <laughs> yeah i'll let oh you know when she's coming back in guys i can't see oh it God. no worries mate um are you being really busy uh, have you been really busy <laughs> How, really busy. Like, how's like, your morning? Meant, 
<laughs> yeah, did the did the walk, did the coffee drop, did the school drop. So all good. <laughs> yeah, busy woman. Well, I don't want to keep you too long. I'll just try. Oh, no, I don't. Can't. If Del doesn't join in a minute. We'll. Uh, we'll no. <laughs> this happens regularly I think that's the logistics of like you know with the kids we'd be doing conference calls and on stuff and then the school are ringing and somebody's sick and somebody's got to go it's, oh, it's a bit it's a bit mental is she back and she's, yeah. <laughs> honestly what a nightmare sorry <laughs> it's okay don't worry and she's I, gone I feel I feel better now <laughs> uh, are you back can you guys hear me yeah I can yeah, hear you can you, can you just turn your camera around Adele. Yeah, no, I will. I'll turn it around now in two seconds. I'm trying to actually see something. Um, give me two seconds. You guys carry on talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to, um, just so you know where I'm taking this conversation, I'm going to, I'll chat to you about your life now and then how you've formed. Oh, she's here. Yeah. Hello. You ready? Okay. Let's Sorry. No, don't worry about it. Oh, hello, my darling. Sorry, this is, oh, this is what I'm... The doggies. I know. Oh, uh-huh. my chocolate brown yeah it's oh, so, so nice it's so brother's, beautiful brother's mooching around somewhere the big yellow oh he's oh going to sleep at the back can you see my little uh, yeah oh they're your babies oh. I mean they're our little they're uh. our fluffy fuckers um, <laughs> okay let's get straight back into it um I mean, he's absolutely smashed it four number ones is like no there's nothing to sniff at it's fucking incredible Oh, how right? So let me just go right back to the start. How did Bewitched form? What years? Because obviously, you, your, yes. your sister's in the band as well, isn't she, Adele? Yeah, my twin. Yeah, so it's yeah. actually quite funny. So we had we had this whole big story back in the nineties of how we formed, which wasn't true at all. It was just a really good marketing story. <laughs> did you come up with that, or was it like your management, like this is going to be brilliant? Um, it was. It was kind of like, so there's truth in the story, but it's just not quite how we all kind of met. So with like this, Kiwi used to be like a, she used to be like a tire fitter in my dad's garage. So that turned Absolutely. into, she was, Brilliant. I know. <laughs> so that turned into, she was a trainee mechanic. Then she used to do kickboxing and it was like, well, that's really good to get that in there because we were tomboyish. So mm-hmm. as, it, as it stands, I think Sinead went into the garage to get her tires Perfect. sorted. Kiwi oh, helped yeah. her. They got chatting. And then Lindsay was looking through the window at watching Kiwi do kickboxing and going, oh, wow, you're a kickboxer. And then that's how we all got chatting. But the actual truth is kind of funny because the truth is, um, so I got talking to Sinead in this dance center called Diggs Lane, where we all used to hang out and dance and everybody was there, you know, Colin Farrell, the boys own lads, River Dance, anyone who was anyone always kind of came to that little hub. What? Decent fucking like little crew. Yeah. It? It, was, know, it was great. <laughs> it was yeah. great. <laughs> so um, Sinead starts talking to me one day and she's telling me everything, you know, wearing a heart on her sleeve. And I thought, she, like, she's very trusting. Like she's literally like going into everything. <gasps> and I was like, that's interesting. So she was like, do you want to go for lunch? So we went for lunch. We got on really well. And she's like, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I want to sing. She said, me too. And I was, ah, should we do a demo tape together? Just uh-huh. like that. Then um, I said, oh, I have a twin. Or I, I didn't say I had a twin. I said, I have a sister. How about we do it with her as well? Let's chat to her and see what she thinks. So Sinead came to the house to actually meet Kiwi. And then when we answered the door together, we obviously had two of the same face. Yeah. And then er- we, the three of us just kind of fell silent. And Sinead just kind of went, oh. And then we both kind of went, Oh, so in the meantime, Sinead didn't know there was twins. So she had been talking to Kiwi. They were great friends. And then all of a sudden started ignoring Kiwi and telling me all her secrets. And I was like, <laughs> she's weird. And Kiwi thought she's rude. And Sinead was like, oh my God, there's two of them. <laughs> it's just like, literally. A little bit literally. of a mind fuck for you there, babe. But at least like... Oh it got, God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then, so we were together for a while. We actually did some demos and we went... Uh, we did some a demo tape together as a three and it just didn't feel quite right. And then a friend of ours, Graham Cruz, who is now um, our stylist, he knew Lindsay and he said, I know the perfect girl. She came and met us and there we go. Bewitched was born. It's all very <laughs> innocent, really. No, yeah, I think innocent. it was really, I actually like that story far better than the contrived one. I do. Yeah, 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 I do. It's so weird. <laughs> it's very parent trap. <laughs> yeah, it is. Totally. <laughs> it is as well. Um, was that when you were called Butterfly Farm? When that's not even three. true. Vicky, that's what? not true. No. no because, like, oh, so in, no. In <laughs> I've been given misinformation. Because you that's have. Wikipedia. Wikipedia says we were in a band called Butterfly Farm, which never existed. Wikipedia also says that myself and Kiwi have a sister called Catherine, who has never existed. No. So, yeah. yeah. So apparently there's seven of us, but there isn't. There's only ever been six. 
<laughs> Wikipedia, right, is fucking so, so sneaky because get on this. So when I first started in like the industry mm. and yeah. I was doing like, you know what it's like, press junk. Yes. Press. And I've said to somebody, obviously wh- where I'm from up north, like I've said to somebody, oh, like I work the doors um, on the VIP. <laughs> I work the doors on VIP rooms. Basically, I was yeah. like, you know, the door. A hostess. The ro- yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah like the, a hostess. Yeah. yeah, the rope rat or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> rope so, rat. <laughs> rope rat. so some like Southern journalist has gone, oh, she worked the doors. She must have been a door, uh, a door woman. Yeah, yeah. about <laughs> so, so, Wiki- so they've wrote it somewhere and Wikipedia has just taken this and passed it off as absolute <laughs> gospel that I used to be a bouncer. <laughs> so That's now, hilarious. You make a good bouncer I think it would I certainly would be all right especially back in the day when I had all of that (laughs) unrivaled rage yes exactly (laughs) Um, but yeah so now every time like a journalist who has clearly been forced to interview us and doesn't really have much of a fucking interest or a clue is always like so what was it like being a door woman in Newcastle and I'm like honestly (laughs) fuck off get better get better sources than Wikipedia mate oh god I know Feel your pain, and I'm sorry I've fallen into that that trap. You fell into the Wikipedia trap. I did. I what are you doing? <laughs> we did have we did have like three different names though before Bewitched. We were Sister Sassy and Desire. And oh, I was I saying like this Desire. Is, oh, that was <laughs> the first very of, very of its um, time. <laughs> yeah, it was actually, wasn't it? I think we thought we were going to be like TLC or something like that. We thought mm. we were going to be like cool. And then we were just like, oh, right. Okay. This direction. Well, we're going down this actually, direction. I mean, it's funny because we thought we were going to be TLC until we actually saw the sale of the video back. And it was like, what is happening there? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> she made that devastated. But then, so I know, I know your brother Adele. I've just done um, okay. the pilgrimage with Shane. Um, oh, yeah. I didn't know you were on that. Wow. Yeah. Honestly, such a nice fella. Like, I yeah. had pretty much the same reaction when I realised he was doing it as well. I was like, fucking hell, shit, I love boys on. Like, absolutely buzzing. But he said a lot of his influences, you know, like, were um like american hip-hop and, and things mm-hmm. like that and sort of really cool artists so when boys on went in the direction it went like it yeah. wasn't particularly his style um, yeah. and i was wondering like saying you know you thought you were gonna be like tlc that sort of vibe were you shocked at the route that bewitch took or did you just yeah. proper embrace it embrace it do you know what i mean realistically like if we were gonna be tlc i mean we're not tlc yeah. that is like you know when you have this idea of who you'd like to be and not who you actually are that's what that was yeah <laughs> So but, uh, but I think for you, Edel, like, you, like Edel yeah. and Kiwi were hip hop street dancers as well. So, mm. you know, that was what you were surrounded yourself, the music, the style of dance. That's what you kind of had submerged yourself into it. Whereas I was doing off musical theatre and other stuff. So it was like you the combo. Jazz hands. The combo was <laughs> jazz hand. That combo was just like, how is that even going to work? Yeah, but it's, yeah, weird. <laughs> When you look back, how we're even together is beyond me. Like when, like Kiwi or like Sinead said, so Kiwi and I would be wearing parachute pants and little belly tops and our hair twisted into little knots. Yeah. And then when we met Sinead, she was wearing like a yellow skirt, white tights with painted shoes and like a sheepskin <laughs> jacket. It's like, how did we even think of being a band with together? Like it's making it sense. I was total Laura Ashley and then the, these like mm. young hip hop <laughs> like what? I'm like what? These rip off holes that you do your tracks and stuff. so what the hell are they wearing? <laughs> Seriously I was like on paper and if you looked at us it was just like that ain't gonna happen it's not gonna no. happen but it did really work and like it was it, you know it really successful you so back again like I feel like that's a proper testament to yourselves so yeah the different personalities yeah. I always think the different personalities in bands is really nice yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, yeah you need yeah, it. Just, yeah, you definitely, definitely need it. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. Can I ask? So, obviously, I feel like touring in the 90s, the early 2000s, that must have been pretty incredible and also like a little bit wild. No, oh, Vicky, you're, you're, oh, this, is bo- no. this is where we become boring. Boring. Oh, weren't oh, wild. Oh. Yeah. I know. Sorry. No. Come on, then. So, well, you just like, so, t- so obviously, I hear you have toured with people like, you know, you're with blue now but like back in the day you must have been with like people like 911 and sort of all those really yeah. cool like a bit white five fuck i bet they've got <laughs> good stories so, they do definitely yeah, I mean, they, they, do. Used to, they used to be really horrible to us like we'd be in the like dress rooms next door and they'd throw their beer over like uh, and, like the bottles and everything it was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> like if you're looking for wild stories just give them a shout like you know yeah we did we did have the boys on to be fair and i like, did yeah 
Our honesty mate yeah. did tell us some pretty wild stories. I mean, yeah, produce, yeah. Me producer was a big fan, and she once pretended oh. to, she once pretended to faint at one of their concerts just so they'd get her <laughs> up on stage. No way! Did she, did, they, did she go? Oh my god! Yeah, she successfully like, completely Good understood woman. the assignment. Yeah. So we, but, we you know that, yeah, I think the thing you know, it's it was just yeah, they were <clears throat> they had great songs. You know, they you know the mixture of like they really had that kind of bad boy you know yeah, image, did. but. Do you know what? It, that's the funny thing with us. We were all on the same page. We loved what we did. We were working 18 hours a day, yeah. putting parting on top of that. We wouldn't have been able to sustain it. And I think that's what kind of, there wasn't one person going off the rails, having to go, listen, drag it in and, you know, having to kind of, you know, we all were of the same mentality. It was like, it was, I used to kind of say we're, you know, when we were rehearsing and doing stuff, we were like these kind of footballers that were just kind of knocking around. And once we got signed and got the deal and started doing the label stuff and put music out there, I kind of felt, you know what, you're like, you're in the premiership team and you've got to produce the goods and you've got to work hard and it's could be over in a flash. So we were lucky in that way. We all had the same mentality to us. So uh, oh, yeah, but yeah, very, very, very sad, boring. Vicky. Very God, boring. Do you know Very what? Sad. Like, obviously, granted, like, I would have loved some stories <laughs> if you saw, like, fucking having, like, fighting like your dad and chucking, uh, like, TVs <laughs> out of windows. But it's actually really uh, wholesome. It's, really it's nice so wholesome. Yeah. No, it's yeah. it is. It's sickly. But it then, really is. Yeah. Because when we I, did. We had so many opportunities. Uh, you know, you're at the Brits, we were touring with NSYNC and Britney, you were like, you know, bumping into kind of Will Smith and all, and we we're just having a couple of drinks. Like we were in the Met Bar one night with Will Smith, and you're just kind of chilling, going like a couple of drinks. Yeah, we gotta go. We're up at like four tomorrow, so nice to see you. Take care. I remember, um, I remember being at SMTV one time, and we got on really well with Destiny's Child, and I remember Beyonce going like, "Oh my God, girls! Oh my God, you're here! It's just amazing. We haven't seen you for ages, right? Let's go out tonight. This is where we're staying. This is the crack." And we were like, "We can't. We're flying to Vegas in the morning." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. It's like. I know. Yeah, okay. So now yeah. looking back with hindsight, yeah. do you feel, you know what, really content with <laughs> your decision? I, I feel like we are got where we were because of that. Or do you sometimes feel like, fuck, I wish I'd done Jaeger Bombs with, with Queen B? I know exactly, right? I think. What? Yeah. I think no, it's a bit uh, of both. I think yeah. we got where we got and we did what we yeah. did because of the focus we had. But at the same time, it's like, Jesus, we could have actually let her hair down a little bit. Yeah. And then, you know, Queen B was asking you to go for shots. Let's just do it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> what, what were we thinking? We went home for a little slice of toast and a porridge breakfast. It's like, Christ almighty. There was that you one know? time <laughs> in a, in a, when we were on tour with NSYNC. Do you remember? And all the lads were going out and I was just like going, I rang Lance and I was just like, where are you going? What are you doing? And I literally jumped in a cab and then I went out and parted with them. But for I was like, when you tell me? When you ring me? And I was like, I don't know. It was just, we never did it. Where are the and moment? it was just, yeah, it was just spur of the moment. Um, and that was quite interesting. That was a good night. <laughs> but oh, yeah. I bet you it was. I bet yeah. That was a good night. That was a good night. Yeah. So, um, but like not very many of them. Not no, very so many. So I know. But then obviously, if you look at all the other groups, right? Like sort of the ones that you did the big reunion with. And I was reading the list through and like they're yeah. just li literally like all my favorite songs, all my favorite bands, my proper, just take a little trip down memory lane for me but there's always somebody missing from the band there's always <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah or there's like a new formation or there's like it's, yeah yeah it, the band plus one it's slightly changed and i suppose maybe that's because of like group differences maybe it's because you know they've probably went a bit too hard in the past like there's all these ch like lineup change-ups but you have remained friends you've remained professional you've come mm. back as a four mm. like i think Maybe that has a lot to do with the fact you all had the same mindset back then. You saw it as a job. You got your head down. You enjoyed it. You smashed it. And yeah. like you didn't mix too much business with pleasure. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it is funny, like um, when you say that, like there's like some bands come back and then there's three of this and two of that and that person's joined. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's quite, yeah, it's quite good. It's quite interesting. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I think, yeah just having the yeah. same mindset and just doing it. And I think we all want, like, it's a really special year for us as well. Like, you know, just being 25 years, just close your ears, you know? Um, <laughs> but like, it's nice just to do something to celebrate that really. And, you know, the new single birthday kind of represents that we're having a birthday and, you know, so <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's kind of nice. I like it. You know what I think as well, Vicky, like when I think back, I suppose about the, um, like not partying and that we were juggling the couple of territories at once. We were juggling America and the UK at the same time as well. So half the time we had to do the American stuff 
while everyone else went to bed. So we still had to consider that even if it was, if it wasn't interviews, it was kind of like background work, sorting all that out on TVs and where everything went. So we probably didn't have the time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like, listen, listen, like I say, I mean, obviously I, when I was younger, my whole life was partying, you know? Yeah. And it must been knackers. knackers. (laughs) Honestly, mate, like I look, I look back now and like, yeah, sure. I had a quite a nice time, but actually I was completely doing it to like because I was a bit I was like drinking because I was a bit uncomfortable I was a bit like yeah. in depth like I didn't feel mm, I didn't I felt, yes. you know I was drinking for the wrong reasons and partying wrong reasons. for the wrong reasons like and now I've forgot far more the mindset like that you're talking about that you've always had you know I'm dead yeah. grateful I'm dead yeah. like I say this is an opportunity I'm excited so I think yeah. kind of you just probably had really old wise heads on your shoulders it's not a bad thing we did well, yeah. do you know what like Sinead once met somebody who kind of like saw into the past and stuff and they told her that we were four nuns together in a past <laughs> life and we were like that makes sense yes and now we're the same like, no, popping around the bloody uniform <laughs> <laughs> I would absolutely um, die saying you do your performance in nuns outfits by the way <laughs> yeah we did actually we did it in Sink the Pink a few years ago but yeah. um Come here, I, it must have been mad for you as well. And I think sometimes when, when people like yourself, when they drink lots and have lots of party and look back and kind of think, I thought I was having a great time, but reflect yeah. upon it and go, actually, I wasn't having as good a time as I actually thought I was, which but is kind it. of mad, isn't it? Hundred and ten percent, and like your twenties are mm. such like difficult years. You yeah, of like trying to work out who you are, and I think yeah. totally. Yeah, even, even I mean, younger than that. Yeah, I know you I had on camera. Look, people were watching you. Do it. It's kind of sad, isn't it? As well, you're like, leave me alone. Oh, my mistakes are everywhere for everyone to fucking ruin my face. <laughs> <That's, laughs> it's crap, isn't it? Yeah. I probably do it's regret crappy. not having more, uh, you know, a few glasses of champagne on a business class flight. You know, oh, yeah. we still never, very. We, never, we still <laughs> yeah. never even did that. We, we went on the seriously. Concours. Yeah, we went on the Concours and went asleep because we were busy yeah. when we got to the other end. <laughs> so t- <laughs> but then it must have been so tiring. So you, yeah. you've gone from being like, you know, just this little I like little girl band in Ireland to mm. like huge international success and like was that a long journey was that loads of graft or did you just totally explode and have to deal with it no it was it was quite yeah. a journey for us in the background it wasn't yeah. in the public eye but we got together maybe two and a half kind of three years before anyone okay. kind of seen us in the public eye so it was a fair slog for ourselves yeah yeah and definitely yeah. And like be, what's the difference between touring in the UK and touring in like sort of America oh. like are the fans different because yeah. I feel like every time I meet American people they're absolutely crackers <laughs> yeah. yeah like the, <laughs> it's insane yeah I know and like back then it was really different so we got this tour bus which was incredible um and we had this most amazing tour yeah, she is um, with our cider tour driver <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing time. really well I don't really drink anymore at all just at 10, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. chucking it back it's a supplement <laughs> everybody <laughs> it's a supplement <laughs> sorry um, name. sorry no you're grand and we had this like a uh, bus driver who had just been on tour with Ozzy Osbourne and then he got us like so but he was amazing so hilarious. just the whole it's so big and just spending three months basically on a tour bus that was mm. the best. I, I mean, I loved that. And then the thing with the fans in America, so you'd, before you do a show, you'd go to a mall and you'd, um, they all buy the albums. So they don't just come up with a piece of paper looking for your autograph. They're like, they've all literally bought the album and you're sitting there for two and a half hours signing all of these, um, albums and they're just mad. Yeah. It's just on it a is, massive and like- scale. Yeah. But also you can just keep touring the USA. Like, I mean, we, I think did four tours and we pretty much just turned them around almost back to back. So we yeah, started, yeah. I think we started kind of in the sheds and then you went to the arenas and then you went to the open air and it was, you just keep going. It's so big. Yeah. Yeah. It's so big. Mm. Almost like overwhelming as well though, isn't it? It didn't you know what? feel like it. Uh, no. I didn't feel like it, it was overwhelming. We had brought dancers with it. We just, we had a brilliant time. Like it was just really, really good because there wasn't much promo. And you know yourself, like promo sometimes is, is difficult. Yeah. Um, you just, you're just kind of doing your thing. You're performing, you're having, you're hanging out with your friends. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And just going and seeing the sights and stuff like that. So to do that in your early twenties. Seeing the sights? Did you see cool. the sights? I saw we nothing. did. Did you? What did yes, you? I never saw nothing. And we went on yeah. BT. <laughs> well, we saw like the Grand Canyon at 3 a.m. when we were driving to the next city. You go, quickly, there it is. Get out of the bus. Quickly, lovely. Don't yeah, be like, so ungrateful. I've never <laughs> seen the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> there was, we never I went to know. see the sites. Like, you know, we never had any time to kind of stop. And we've been everywhere. We've traveled the world, but we've not seen a huge amount of it, really, have we? 
But no, that, there's that, a difference. Mad. There's a few, there's a few photographs. The beast, isn't it? <laughs> mad, yeah, isn't totally. it? Yeah, it's mad. And you know what? I think it's not. I think when you say like it's intimidating, I think there's sometimes so many people it's not intimidating because it's it just seems unrealistic. Like Hyde yeah. Park, hundred thousand people watching you in Hyde Park, and you're like, okay, well they're not really watching me, are they? So you kind of yeah. go into yeah. a different world. And also, yeah, like, it's almost a bit like autopilot y for you guys as well, yeah. isn't it? Like, I know I'm not a natural performer or a I'm public speaker, and like, it, it, it's, it terrifies me, all that sort of stuff. But if, if for you, it's, it's your job and you've been doing it since you were so young, and it almost felt like, especially the way you're talking about how you did America and stuff, like a conveyor belt, you just got, yeah, yeah. And you got on with it. So, yeah, these, as, as sad as it is, it wouldn't have mattered if you were in America or Poland or like the UK. Yeah, it all just started to feel a bit samey. Yeah, it was like that sometimes. And we like, we, sometimes we'd be in like three or four different countries in one day and we wouldn't have a clue which countries we'd been in or, you know, going on stage and saying hello to whatever city you are. Oh, yes. Bad idea. Really bad idea. Yes. Because you generally get the city wrong. So it's like, yeah. don't say that. Just yeah. hello is fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, do you have any regrets from that time then? Because obviously, you're what in all these amazing, fantastic places, meeting amazing, fantastic people. But it sounds as though you're what proper just workaholics. Or do you? Do you like, <laughs> no. do, do, are you have no regrets? Like, what? What's no, regrets. Regrets. No, no regrets. No, I don't do regrets. No regrets. No. We're so boring, no. aren't we, Vicky? We don't even have regrets for you. No <laughs> stories. No regrets. This, Who this brought is, them on? This is crap. <laughs> have you not at least shagged anybody good? <laughs> No, no, <laughs> not at all. I mean, sorry, that's not to say everyone I've shagged has been crap, by the way. Sorry, offense is like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, oh God. God. No. I, I've absolutely loved chatting to you, Lasses, in part one. I swear <laughs> I'm going to stop being so cheeky in part two and we can chat all about your brand new single and what's next for you guys. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Hello everybody mm. and welcome back to part two of Vicky Patterson The Secret 2. This week I'm joined by the gorgeous girls from Bewitched, Sinead and Adele. Welcome back, lasses. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so oh, much hi. for having us. <laughs> Thanks for having us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before I start looking like towards the present and the future, which I'm dead excited to do with you, I just have to quickly ask, you toured with Justin Timberlake, obviously NSYNC, and then Britney Spears at the same time, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Were yes. they together at that time or were they not? Yes. They were were. together, but they were keeping it very secret. Like, so you never, we didn't see a huge amount of Justin or Britney. So it started to become really obvious where they were going. It's just like, I think they're hanging out with each other. They were keeping it very, very quiet. Oh my God. I fucking love them two together. I love them two together. I did. I mean, obviously he's dead happy and his bird is unbelievable. Um, Oh yeah. And you just hope Britney's all right, bless her. But I feel like, that little stage of fashion was absolutely iconic and you did a bit of double denim yourself oh, as well. Oh, no, a bit. A bit. <laughs> we used I to mean, puke on we... ourselves every morning. Yes. Yeah. I mean, what we didn't do to denim, I mean, we did everything. Yeah. yeah. Stuck jewels on it, dyed it, cut it. Oh, everything we did. Connoisseurs of denim, definitely. <laughs> yeah, defo. But you know what? We were in vogue. Like, we were actually in vogue for our fashion. Which is insane. For, for your services to denim. <laughs> yeah. It was, um, I think it was Jesse Hold On. I think it was the specific outfits we wore on the MTV Awards in like 99 or 2000. Um, and they were gorgeous. They were good outfits. Yeah, they were. They deserved this. I mean, we didn't design them. That was face or It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to like your sort of, your your new stuff and your new vibes. Like, I feel like you're letting a lot more of your own pers- your own personality shine through rather than sort of, denim washing yourselves as a band yeah. um, is that really is that really important to you now to have more yeah, of your own identities sure yeah definitely I think when it comes to the styling and stuff like that you kind of have to let people do their job as well because you know the way you can get into a rut yourself so yeah. there's a little bit of give and take but we are not doing the full double denim but if we came back and didn't have denim we would disappoint a lot of people so kind of just doing it in a bit more relaxed way I guess yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of nice. Yeah. Listen, we can't always let Sinead go back to her own stuff because she might end up in the yellow skirt and the white tights again, and that's just not having it. You it's threw just my not, sandals. It's just not going to work. You, I <laughs> stayed in her house years ago, and I gold sandals, and she threw them in the bin, and I couldn't find them. Yeah. Oh. What was, so really bad. what was so That's offensive about these gold sandals? Because she was wearing open toe gold sandals with her white tights. 
Yeah. So the, with the <laughs> well, forget about the white tights. We're just talking about gold sandals now, to the woman that never be. possessed it. See, I had I was into heels. She was just wore trainers all the time. I yeah. had I had my heels. You know, you know. I like to dress up a little bit, and she was just like, "Yo, what's going down?" I know exactly. It's in so the bad suit, in the tracks, like, in the trainers. <laughs> me over here trying to be t balls, like you know. I think when you look back on it, it is actually really bad that I dumped them on her because she was she wasn't like rolling in it at the time either, so she couldn't have bought herself another pair. <laughs> Yeah, but Samir, Sinead, sometimes you get it so wrong. I mean, Sony bought us like Gucci sandals at some point and Sinead would get off the plane with the plane socks on with her Gucci sandals. It was like, what are you doing? <laughs> that's, oh, that's kind of all in now. That's like yeah, you know, all the, the people pe- that walk that walk around with the big the socks on and they're like sliders. I know, it's so true, it? isn't it? To be fair, you're probably just ahead of your time, Sinead. <laughs> I was totally. <laughs> <laughs> you were, baby. Oh, God. So you're back after 25 years, this is and... I feel like there must have been a huge, like dynamic, like a dynamic shift, a huge change. Because not only are you doing the pop star thing, but you're also doing it with everything else you've got going on in your lives. You know, like whether that be like you were saying, the school run, being a mummy, uh-huh. every, everything else. Has how is is that hard to try and juggle everything all at once? Yeah, no, it can be. It's yeah. really hard sometimes because we like we have ten kids between us, Vicky, which is insane. Hang like, on, between everyone in the band or just you? Yeah. 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 No, okay. in the band. <laughs> Jesus, no. Oh, mother like, of God. Can you imagine? No. no, and like, so, do you know what? Half the time it's just trying to even get on a WhatsApp call is impossible yeah. because it's like, oh no, but I have pickup, I have drop off, I have yeah. football, I have dancing, I have whatever. It's a, it can be an absolute pain. And that ultimately is the job, not going away to work. Going away yeah. to work is the break. And it's like trying <laughs> to schedule it and deal with it all is the nightmare. No, honestly, yeah. I. Taught, that resonates so much with me and like I hope I'm not offending yeah. anybody here because every time I talk about my dogs like my children I get some people being so worked up but I'm not there <laughs> yet know. I'm not there yet on the motherhood front now I, I will yeah. get there but um even like you you know like you get up at six so, and you know you you do yeah. you do the you do everything you've got to do whether it's the school run the dog walk the breakfast blah blah, blah whatever and like it just feels like you just get back and you just get sorted and then I've got to I've got to walk them again. You probably feel like you've just got to yeah. pick the kids up again. And yeah. honestly, yeah. that's just, when I get to go on like a photo shoot or go on day film and like I feel so guilty about her can I look after the lads because I'm like, this feels like a fucking day off for me. And I know it's not yeah. a day off, it's work, yeah. but it's it, it's a break from the the it's the norm. A break, yeah, break the norm, from the, the life monotony. admin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But I know. Nice to hear you say that you feel like that as well because I was starting to feel yeah. like I was fucking a bit guilty actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, not at all. I know. And I've got a dog as well actually, and she's amazing. And don't feel guilty because your dogs are your kids; they are your kids. I don't know why people get bothered with you over it because actually yeah. sometimes, sometimes I find it harder to sort a of miller my dog out than I do the kids because the kids have school and extracurricular activities and kit friends and sleepovers and all that stuff. But not everyone yeah. will have a dog, so it's actually kind of harder. Yeah. But it is no. def- it is definitely like a different dynamic for you guys now. Um, and I wanted to know, like, I don't know the ages of your children, but do they are they aware that their moms are fucking icons? Or are they, are <laughs> I they, are say they a bit embarrassed now? No, well, I can see it. I can <laughs> definitely see it. Well, do you know what? it's so funny because my Stephanie Dell, we our kids are older, so Edel's eldest is fifteen, mine's fourteen, and right. so. Um, they have moments like, you know, where they kind of realize, oh, did you do that? But they're not really in awe of it at all. Like they're just kind of, mm. I mean, remember when that we were in Australia a few years back and Samara and Zaini came out and I think they were kind of going, how do people know the words to your song? And they're all singing it back there. And she was eight at the time. So she was just like, what is going on here? She, you know, was just a bit like, I don't understand the situation at the minute. You know? No. <laughs> and like, I think it's, yeah. It's when the teachers kind of say to the kids, sometimes they go, you know, your mom was like my little mix in the day. And yeah. then they kind of go, oh, is that what it was? It's like, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Mm. Oh, bless them. So slowly but surely they're understanding a little bit, yeah? Oh, yeah, they yeah. know. I mean, they're old enough. I've got 11 or 12 and a 15-year-old, so they know what you do. And I kind of like, they don't care, and I kind of quite like it. They like to come to a gig and sort of hang out, but... If they did care, it'd be a bit weird, wouldn't it? Like, oh my God, and you're on the telly and you're doing whatever. It's just like, they don't care, but they're really supportive. Yeah. Um, like the other week when we did kind of comic relief in this morning and that, you know, they were watching and especially my 15 year old, she'd be like, and I watched and I thought you did really well. And she's watching kind of the new single birthday and she keeps watching on Spotify and seeing who's listening and saying what. And she was like, oh, it's all really positive. And it's all great. So she's kind of supporting and watching in the background, which is so lovely. 
there's it sounds like they're so grounded and measured like I feel yeah. like if, yeah. honestly I worry about because I really assumed, and I tell this story all the time, but I assumed as a mother, I'd be very like, if somebody came up to me and was like, oh, your son's just pushed my daughter over and blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, I'm really sorry to hear that. Let me go and talk to him. That's out of order, blah, blah, blah. But actually I have realized that <laughs> since having the dogs, I'm the type of mother who's going to be screaming at the prison gates. Like he's fucking innocent when he's got three women in his freezer. <laughs> like I know, I know that's who I'm going to be now. So I really worry that's about hilarious. having about having a, t- a tiny bit of like celebrity <laughs> or whatever what I'm going to turn my children into because I'm very capable of just turning them into assholes you know so, <laughs> it's lovely to hear that you managed to raise very like grounded measured like just beautiful children this whole yeah, for me yes it's, it, it's, it's funny because I think it, it all comes out I think with all of us like being Irish and having success, you ain't, and it's probably the same for you, like being up north as well. Nobody will let you away with anything. And especially your family. <laughs> it's just point. like, listen, you come here and they knock you. And I think you naturally just have that kind of, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, we're doing what we're doing. We're really, really lucky. It's great. There's success with the book, whatever. Like there was yeah. never that kind of, when well, we're famous and, you know, that was never the thing that drove us anyway. So it's kind of like, yeah, we wouldn't get away with it. So yeah, it's that, weird, isn't it? Because yeah. like often we're so kind of cool about everything we've done slash what we do. Sometimes people are like, I mean, you're not proud of what you do because you look like, I mean, you don't really talk like it, like you're proud. It's like, well, of course we are. You know, we achieve so much and it's amazing, but it's still just a job and we're still just people like everyone else. So it's kind of weird when people are going like, well, are you talking yourself down? It's like, I don't think so. <laughs> we're just we're just sure. naturally humble queens that's just yeah, what yeah. It is. So i think we are like yeah yeah i think so you know mm. <laughs> but it's, it's really refreshing and like obviously like having met your brother and like i've met ronan when i did like the one show and stuff like yeah that. i've met it, it honestly good just loads. loads i've been really lucky to meet loads of like lovely like completely my heroes from that era yeah, um yeah. but the, the, it is it's all the same like you are very grounded very sort of like refreshingly humble um, <laughs> and it it's it's good to see because there is the different direction that a lot of yeah. people have taken where they did get lost in it or unfortunately it has had really bad ramifications on their mental health and stuff and yeah you guys yeah. seem to have escaped that sort of section relatively unscathed. Yeah, I think yeah. I suppose it's We're not lucky. letting that what you do define who you are. And I think that mm. is one of the things as well. It's not just it's part of who you are, but it doesn't define everything about you. So I think we're kind of we were all lucky after, you know, then the, the band ended. We all kind of went off and did, you know, different things as well, which I don't know, just we just got back up and got on with stuff as well. And you know, it just helps. Like we all went back to college, you're sitting in a classroom with people, you're just doing stuff, you're just doing normal stuff. Like, so, and that's, you, you kind of crave a little bit of that though, I think yeah. when. Oh, fucking when, hell, after what you don't done. Don't you? Yeah. Do you crave well, I, normality. I remember, going, like, I remember going back to college and the first time, you know, when they do that round robin, you've got to say, my name is, and I did this. And like a fun like, fact oh. about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I was like, I literally, that's the worst bit. But then the girl before me stood up and she was like, hi, my name is Phoenix and I'm a stripper and so-and-so bar. I was like, I'm all good. Oh, <laughs> yes, Phoenix. the attention is on Phoenix. So I was delighted. <laughs> Thanks, Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. It's so funny. But, but that sounds like a game changer, you know, like is when sort of this incredible, exciting thing sort of tailed off the first time around is that you did just, you didn't sit and wallow. You didn't sort of yearn for times gone by. You just got your head down and did something else. And I think that's really inspirational, actually. Yeah, you just have to do that, don't you? You got to keep life moving. Like when one thing ends, something else begins, but only if you let it. Yeah. So you kind of just tend to have that. Yeah, exactly. No matter what the chapters are, like you're completely like the author of it yourself. You can make them as exciting and brilliant and full yeah. of love and beautiful stuff as you want them to be. Or you can really wallow and miss what you used to have and whatever. Yeah. So yeah. this is all you guys lived in the here and the now, embraced the change and were grateful yeah. and happy. And it's probably why, you know, you are back doing what you love and everyone's supporting you because these are just so upbeat and nice women. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, that's so Thank lovely. You. But it is, you know what, we have, we have brilliant support at the minute. Like we've come back with this new single birthday and there is nothing but nice things that people have to say and supporting us along the way. And it's just, it's really yeah. kind of cool. But it's so good. That's why. Like I had a little bop to yeah. it this morning. I was like, I it like is this. So ca- I mean, the minute we heard it, we it were like, good. Hey, give it to us, yeah. give it to us. We want it. Like it was just... <laughs> Yeah, it was, it's really it was good. Just, 
Mm. And I think for us as well, I think it was important to just bring our music to 2023 and it is the sound of 2023. Yeah. There's no point in us going back and rewriting the first no. album. You, you guys have what you want from that stage. Now we just want to make fresh music that sort of fits in the industry now. So and it's it's nice important. and it was it's important to us. And I think I suppose people could have argued against that when we came back and going, what they're doing, it doesn't sound like them. But we haven't had that. So it's quite cool. Yeah. Quite nice. Because your supporters are loyal. That's why we've been waiting. We've been waiting. <laughs> <to come back. laughs> now come here to me, Vicky. So like and we we really a bewitched fan. Yes, yeah, so I was bewitched boys on I'm really sorry, this is no offense to Westlife. All the Irish thing or oh, No, no, no offense to Westlife. Them. Like they were absolutely class, but I think they were more like yeah. my sister's generation. I was that little bit yes. too old for Westlife. So no, I was bewitched in boys on hardcore. That's um, mad, isn't it? But now so that you know that we're so innocent, ridiculous, and I've no stories, you're a little less of a fan. You're going, oh, they're crap, actually. <laughs> no, I feel like feel like it makes me like you even more. Oh, like you're, that's nice. you're just exactly what you see, you know, like you saw these like four lovely Irish girls who were singing about like fighting like their dad and like just <laughs> or having, or seemingly having this like great friendship and it would have left me really crestfallen if actually behind the scenes you were a bunch of cunts. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, isn't it? It's just like, it's like if I were to put it in context of your story, you're standing there with your little notepads going, I fight like my dad as well, but they've gone, put you on the door going, I fight like my dad as well. It's just like, what? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a different story. It's my mum, you've got to be scared of if I'm honest. <laughs> Oh is God, it? Oh yeah. Are you like your mum? Yeah, so yeah, I'm like, I suppose like anybody, I'm a nice mix of the both and I've got some good yeah. bits and some bad bits, but everyone assumes like my dad's like six foot three, like fucking mm, you, yeah. used to do more one-handed press-ups in a bar than Rocky. That's how he's oh like. God, <laughs> he's wow. so everyone assumes like, oh, she must just like all of that feisty bit must be like a dad, but honestly, I swear to God, piss me little mom off and you fucking know oh, about yeah, it. I know, I know. <laughs> Hilarious. They say that about like, you know, Irish women as well. Like, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, yeah, yeah just... Stand clear. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, that is the thing. Like, you know, we come off all innocent and wholesome and great. But if you actually hurt one of mine, you're going to fucking know all about it. Excuse oh. the F in there. Yeah. I was, do you know what, Vicky? I was, I was coming on this podcast today and I have a bit of a mouth on me, like especially when the kids aren't around. I love a bit of an F and a blind. And I was going, Vicky is going to have me F my way through this podcast. And I've done really well. That was my first one. <laughs> I always love it when I get people on and they're always like, they start telling the story and they get really animated into it. And then they, you just drop themselves and they go, e, sorry, I'm allowed to swear. And I'm like, you're on my fucking podcast. What, are you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh, that's, it's been so such a pleasure talking to you and I do think I've managed to contain my fan girl status like a little bit well you actually have done very well I'm well, very done it. really well <laughs> so much so I think you're lying no. <laughs> honestly inside I'm literally like made of questions but I'm trying to keep it cool because I am here in a professional <laughs> capacity but we do have some lovely questions from some big fans of yours so first of all yes. I feel like what everybody wants to know and kind of what I do as well is like nobody can believe it's 25 years since Sale of A nobody can believe the other age years are we we'll want to know what your fucking secrets are last <laughs> don't be holding out on her come on what's the, what's the skincare tip so you've got like a 12-step routine is it really long am i gonna hear <laughs> do you know what I've, I've mine is very basic i've got this local aromatherapist yeah. and she just like makes all these creams and serums and oils and they're all pure and that's what i put on my face i've done got no None of us have any had any work done. Um, drop, that, I just, drop that Insta because she's about to blow up. No word of a lie. I'll yeah, yeah. Who? Her Insta, the lady that oh, she doesn't from. have an Instagram. She's like ah, sixty-five years of age. She doesn't want to like be a big. Scottish woman. She's beautiful. Mm. She oh looks gosh, twelve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's like so, so yeah, so good. I don't know. It's just I think we all kind of tend to like look after ourselves, take our vitamins. Yeah. Oh, you know, do you know? But it, like exactly, it's just Irish part of. It's part of our whole wholesome thing. Like we all eat really well. We eat really oh, well. Yes. We don't drink an awful lot. And But I have discovered though, I don't know if you've heard of 001 skincare, have you? No, I haven't. Well, so I, I use 001 now for the last kind of three, four years maybe. And they've got like, um, you know, the Gia Shua stones, if that's how you say it. They've got loads of facial tools. Uh -huh. And honestly, that's been amazing. When I started first using my facial tools about four weeks later, everybody uh -huh. was asking me how to have Botox. And I was like, really? Is I was that like, the, no. the ones yeah. that you sort of yeah. go like this with? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I see yeah. people using them like on all the TikToks, and I'm like, who's got the fucking time? But exactly. then, yeah. she does 
I do. I do it like while while I'm walking around. I'm making breakfast and I'm going like this with my tools, going like, what would you like next? Who's having toast? Who's having whatever? (laughs) Multitasking. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, last as well. That was really unhelpful. Thanks so much. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know what, maybe though, we don't. We don't have a bit of Botox or filler or anything between us. And you would kind of think that we probably should look older because of that, but somehow we don't. Nah, I think... I don't know if that's a thing. I almost think less is more. And like, I'm a huge advocate for sort of... Like, I'm not judgmental in the slightest. Anyone can do whatever yeah, yeah, they want. Yeah, do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, whatever totally. makes yeah. them happy. You know, it's a difficult industry and people pick you apart. So if a little bit of here and there makes you feel better, it's not a my fucking business. But sometimes I think when people do let themselves like grow old gracefully and they've got the bits that God gave them, like actually... It, it just it the small really, bits. Yeah. Oh, I, okay, I've got to hold my hands up there. I gave that area a little oh, bit did of help. You? I mean, it's like I have. So, I was so tempted, like for so many years, because I have like yeah. the smallest boobs, and I do. I would like a set, and especially when I was breastfeeding when I first got pregnant, I was like, Oh my god, I've got a full thirty-four D, and they looked amazing. I was delighted with myself, and then of course all the milk goes, and yeah. they're worse than they were before. But um, <clears throat> until I was about thirty-eight, I yeah. was desperate to have a set of boobs, and now I couldn't care less. Couldn't care less. I'm really, really flat. Yeah. And I didn't but even wear know, a bra half I, the time. It's like, whatever. Yeah, but, but that's really Del. cool now. It's really Yeah, really cool. cool. I remember at the time when you were going through that, Kay Hudson was like, you know, she was all over the places her movies and she's really, really flat. flat-chested. And I was like, yeah. look at Kate. Mm-hmm. Look at Kate. Look, look, look what she's doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but I was, I was kind of, we were all, we're all quite small chested. And Not now, Sinead, you and your double D's no, or whatever you've No, no, I, yeah, exactly. Fuck <laughs> it. They just appear. <laughs> yeah, cannons. Like, <laughs> I'm almost like going oh right it's so weird you spend like nearly 40 years having no boobs and then all of a sudden you're in this next stage going okay well, what am I doing with these it's it's kind of it's weird <laughs> yeah it's weird it's an adjustment like I so I mean I I've always had big boobs like if you look at me mom like she'd always had big mm. boobs as well and then um I dropped loads of weight really fast like did yeah. this did this like fitness dvd and stuff and it was all on a strict timeline and of course like you know yourself when your body changes like boobs in particular. It goes there first. Yeah, it goes yeah. there first, you know. It's so annoying. Yeah. When I lost it, it came off there first. And because yeah. it happened dead drastically, like my skin just didn't have a chance. So I was left with what can only be described as fucking spaniel's ears, mate. Um, <laughs> and I was only young. I was about like, 27. Yeah, no. So you yeah, sort I that. Went, went up to what I was originally. So yeah, I've always had big boobs. So I've, I've always known how to dress for this and stuff like that but it is a bit of adjustment Sinead like just getting the the old Bristol cities out of Norway oh, yeah I know and it's just like I was just like oh god yeah that wrong? puberty in me 40s fucking hair yeah, well, this is what I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean <laughs> oh, this is what I mean um, oh god nah but you look you all look class and it's just it comes with age doesn't it sort of like learning to love what you've got regardless yeah, of, of what everyone is, else yeah. has and I am so glad I kind of waited until that age but I also yeah. couldn't believe it took me that long because yeah. I could have done so many things in the meantime yeah. and I think as well when I had kids like because my eldest Kyo like she's 15 and that really made me think about it because I'm like well hold on a second if I'm changing myself what am I telling my kids I'm telling my, my kids that I don't think I'm good enough yeah and that I just didn't feel like I wanted to kind of put that on them either yeah. So um, I know. now, of course, I'd like a set of lips and a set of boobs. Yeah, like I think I know. And I think I read once before, like if I had lips as small as Kibi and Edelf and Bewitched, I'd kill myself. <laughs> but it's just oh, like, that. <laughs> which is like, uh, it's so like, you know, social media sometimes, uh, isn't it? But it's like, it made me think about that person going, God, that's really sad. Like, I mean, how are you? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah I know. Like, really? I'm telling you right now, like I've started, I've literally just did a set of stories about it last night because it, there's an influx. Like, I think my content's pretty, like, pat, like wholesome. Like, I'm not fucking posting stand in front of, like, Ferraris. Like, I've not got a different designer yeah. handbag every week. Like, I'm pretty bog standard. I just love being with me family and me dogs. Yeah. And, like, y- you know, I'm I'm chill, I think, as far as influencers go. So when I get an influx of criticism, I think, right, this is a prob- has to be happening across the board. And I, I, I think the... I think people are the world's a bit of a scary place like, yeah it is sometimes people, isn't it? yeah people are feeling yeah. angry and unsettled and nervous and they don't know where to direct that anger so subsequently it's being misdirected at people in the public yeah that's a good point yeah um, and I yeah I've noticed a, a mad influx in it so what I've started to do because like old me just wants to be like 
Well, Mitt Old Me just wants to fucking kick off, mate. Yeah. yeah. And I there's know. still an element of me that's really feisty, you know, like I've grown, I've evolved, but there's still an element of me that wants to tell people yeah. to fuck off. So I've yeah. started sending people the number for the Samaritans. <laughs> oh, have you bless you. Yeah. Oh. And I got the tip off Scarlett Moffat, right? And I just think, you know, obviously you're unwell, mate, or you're unhappy. Yeah. And you need someone to talk mm. to. You need a positive outlet for this hate and anger. Because it's certainly not me, you know? Yeah. It's not oh, yeah. gonna be me. I am not the one. Not I am not your me. escape yeah. girl. I am yeah. not. Yeah. yeah, but you know it's what I weird. noticed as well. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot more on TikTok. Like there's a lot. I, I'd see more kind of negative stuff on TikTok than I would yeah. say on Instagram. Yeah. Or, um, I don't know. Like a bit on Facebook, but like it's just I don't know. It's it's kind of weird. It is. I think it's just across the board on every medium. Like mm. you're gonna, it's gonna be a reflection of of what's happening outside, and people are feeling angry. Um, but yeah, I think. they are. And listen, like you know, the world is not full of lovely people. There's plenty no. of arseholes out there, and some of them have a keyboard. It's that oh, simple. Yeah. And it's that straightforward. And that's actually mm. a really good question. You guys were at your height of fame and like your, your sort of success when social media wasn't, it didn't really exist. You were yeah. so lucky. Are you, I was going to say, are you really mm. grateful about that? Yeah. Massively. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Don't blame you. Don't blame mm -hmm. me. Because it's an extra job as well. Like I can't think, oh my God, like 18 hours, of, like we get stressed out when we meet, we're like, oh, we have to do TikTok. Uh, what are we going to post? Like it's like, oh my, and we're so bad. We're trying yeah. to get with it. Like, but it's just like, if you had to have that as well, now we probably, probably would have had somebody there just doing it for us, at, yeah. at, which would have been easier. But um, I don't know. It just, it, it adds that extra layer. And then, you know, just even being on your phone, at least yeah. you just go to, go to bed and go to sleep. Do you know what? I think kind of that, scrolling that, thing. Yeah, exactly that as well. But I think, you know, in terms of being in the public eye and not having that social media, I think it was so good. We were so protected from us because right now, because of social media, all those negative comments are coming into your safe space. Yeah. And it's like, you should be just be able to sit at home in your safe space with no, no, no one having anything bad to say, like, and just be with your family. So it's kind of hard. So it's, it's trying to put the phone down, isn't it? But then you, you get into that, like, uh, that mind where you're flicking down. What am I even flicking for? Nothing's even coming up that's worthwhile. Like, you know. It's yeah. a, it's a it's an addictive thing. We've all become far too like reliant on my phones, you know. And I do think yeah. it's, a bit, it's a little bit toxic. Um, but when it's so intrinsically linked to your career, like yeah. Yeah. mine is, you know, and like yours would have been. Yeah, I think it's and yours is probably a bit now, you know. It's yeah. it's just hard to switch off. But yeah, it become it has a hold on you that I at times think is super unhealthy. It does. But you know what? And then we're lucky as well because it is, you know, like like the likes of TikTok. It's you have the opportunity of potentially being on a big TV show every day if your video goes viral. So yeah. it's a really good marketing tool. Yeah. And and we just have to get used to it. And I think at first, because we're old school and we're from when it didn't exist, we were sort of fighting against it a little bit and just going, oh no. But actually, you know, when you kind of are grateful for the platform, I suppose you kind of see it in a different way and go, yeah, I need to learn it actually. And it is going to help. And that's it. It's just like <laughs> absolutely anything. Like you've got to use it, get what you need out of it and then walk away. Exactly, um, yeah. And rather than getting bogged down in the you, whatever it is you have, Do you know what it is start, like. A, sometimes, up, whatever. <laughs> I have that temptation as well that you have when people say something nasty, and I just want to fire back. And then I'm just yeah, like, don't yeah. fire back, don't say anything. But I always want to. Yeah, yeah, always. And but you know, like it's not a happy, nice person writing these no. things. Like it's exactly, like, it's never somebody like you or me or me. It's it's not someone kind, and not it's fucking Derek who's like living in his mad <laughs> box room and wanking into yeah. a sock mate. I know, <laughs> don't really crap. But so, it's so yeah. true, isn't it? Because if you go onto their profile, all it is is negativity. So it's not even about you. It's like I'm not even taking that comment on. Yeah, and yeah, I, I so we've we've just got to learn to just. Just, just rise above it. Rise above it and send them the smart yes, number. Yes, <laughs> I've got another question. Spice Girls and S Club 7 both made movies. Um, if you guys want to make a bewitched movie, what would the plot be? Well, it'd be terribly boring, wouldn't it? <laughs> it'd be like, well, I think we'd go back, so back, back to the beginning conversation <laughs> where a bit like Parent Trap. We could do something like that and start it off. Yeah. You know? That would be, ex I think that would be a good one. Yeah. The I'm Irish Parent Trap. Yes. But <laughs> ours, I think, you know what? Our movie would be that sort of... Um, Commitment focus. slash. Well, I think it's the focus on the fact that we were four, probably what you would have called normal girls. Mm -hmm. Nobody would have said that we were destined to be stars. Nobody would have said we were anything special at any point for any reason. And, you know, against all odds, if you looked at us as four different characters, we actually did make it in this world. Mm -hmm. Like when I, I remember when I was younger, like, you know, friends would say like, you're not going to be a singer. You're not special enough. You're not like so-and-so, you know, so-and-so in the other class or teachers would be like, okay, 
right, so what's your real job? What are you really going to do in life? And nobody really ever had your back. But against all of yeah. that, we actually yeah. saw it through anyway. And for me, I've always been kind of, I don't really listen to people. I don't, I don't yeah. care what other people have to say. And I tend to do my own thing. And I yeah. definitely don't like, I just don't care what people have to say. I don't care what they think. And I think that's also why we got to where we got to and why we're still doing it now. We would have so many reasons why not to come back now this many years later too. But, you know, so many reasons for other people to say, but I really don't give a crap what they think. Yeah. And I, I think it's quite important. It's an underdog story. It yeah. is, yeah. And then just yeah, trusting trusting yourself. Like I would have done a lot of visualization. I didn't even realize I was doing it when I was like... like manifesting. 10. Yeah, like yeah. sitting on the stool, 10 times Debbie Gibson, giving it large and then having a moment on stage <laughs> on a stool with the guitarist going, oh shit, like, oh, I've I literally, I've I've manifested literally this. I've manifested this. Mm. And I did that quite a lot. Like, um, yeah. So it's just going into your dreamland state and like as it else is against all the odds, like, you know... I never got the lead role in all the shows. My sister just kind of like kicked ass all the time. I was always in the back going, Ooh, uh, do you know that kind of stuff? But it's that drive to kind of go, okay, yeah, but you're not really that great or you're not this. And it's determination, I think as well. So I think it could be a good movie. I would yeah, 110% watch that. <laughs> Giving us like Gaga vibes. Like everyone told her she couldn't do it, but, look but it's at her true. Now. Yeah, but it is. It's true. And like, I think people allow other people to be the judge of them way too much and they give up on themselves so soon. Yeah, but like yeah. the people who are judging you are only people as well. So yeah. it's like, it's it's you versus them. Why are you picking them? Pick yeah. you. Okay. Pick you, back you. And like, believe Absolutely. in yourself. Always, yes. 100%. Girls, it's been a proper pleasure talking to you. Um, like, obviously, so nice. for me... For me, it was just like dream come true, but it, I think every, everybody else is going to get something out of that as well. All the lovely listeners, because they're about my age and you are fucking so sick. <laughs> like you're so modest, but like you're big stars and like, it's been a, a proper pleasure talking to you. Um, it's been so it's much been fun. It's been so you. refreshing yeah. had a talking nice time. to you. We've had a lovely yeah. time. Thank you. I just want to yes. say you've done amazing as well. Like from where you yeah, came well from, done. like a Geordie really show. Well done. Break, you broke away from the pack as well. And I think mm. you've done amazing. Haven't yeah, you've done amazing. Not that there's anything wrong with the pack. I don't have no. a problem with the pack, but <laughs> I just... No, I know. Yeah, it's and it's such a journey too as well. Like mm. it's been really good. Yeah. And, so and well you know, done. It was like everything you said before, Adele, really resonated with me. Like nobody believed I could do anything different. Like yeah. I, I remember my agents yeah. at the time being like, what are you going to walk away from MTV for? Like there's nothing else for you apart from Geordie Shaw. Yeah, it's sad. Nobody thought, you know, and like, I had to take that leap of faith and believe in myself and yeah. do something different and nothing against the rest of the cast they're all doing great yeah. and I'm so proud yeah. of them but for me I wanted something different out of life and yeah I, I think yeah. backing yourself is probably the answer to that isn't it but oh, we, yeah. we're in yeah. we're in that era though where you know you've, you've done all that and we're at that stage where all these different stories and people evolving and just, you know we, we love all that like that's yeah. been you know which has been perfect timing for you as well like which is yeah. Yeah, great like no, it's everything's awesome. everything's falling into place for all of us, and I'm I'm so pleased. And um, before I yeah. let you guys go, here, Vicky, mm-hmm. passing the secret too. We always ask our lovely guests to give our gorgeous listeners um a couple of pearls of wisdom, just so they don't feel like they've been listening to me fucking fan girl <laughs> for, for an hour. Um, and I think what you guys have managed to achieve is nothing short of spectacular. Like, there have been loads of bands who've tried to come back and and not quite done it. There's been loads of people who haven't had like songs that people are still dancing to on a Saturday night like you've you've got longevity um I want to know what your secret is to going the distance dun, dun, dun. the secret of going the distance moment Do of truth know, is a big question as well isn't it like, I think it's, it's a com- I, think, I think it's a combination of a few different things I think the fact that you know we're so close and we're kind of on the same page and you know you, you've you can't make things happen you've all got to want it individually for the collective. And I think we're really good at, at doing that. Um, and it's like seizing opportunities. We've had this platform and then now we're given another opportunity to do that. And I think we're all like, yeah, let's, you know, let's just do it. Um, and it's just kind of, yeah, follow through and really kind of believing. But it's, yeah, I think it's we, belief, all, work isn't on, it? we yeah. all work on feelings. Mm. And I think we really feel and believe that this is the time for us to actually, if we're going to do a comeback, this is the time to do it. 
Um, and it's very, very similar to how we were years ago. We didn't have a manager. So we've changed management. We're kind of doing stuff ourselves. It's like, it's like, oh God, this is like the way replaying. it was years ago. Yeah. yeah. And it's like replaying. And then we're visiting places and it's just like, oh my God, we were here and we're getting all these different signs. And we'd be all kind of in quite intuitive like that as well. So just see what yeah, happens. I think, it, yeah, exactly. I think all of what you said and it's just love and what you do and then belief. It's just belief. A belief against all odds, against what anyone else has to say. It's just believing in yourself and committing to it yeah. and just going for it. Yeah. You know, I read somewhere once before, and this is one of my favorite anecdotes, so I really hope it's true, that like the first time around when um, Take That were a band, they were just really young, but they were all so polite and grateful and kind that to everybody, whether it was like the fella getting the tea or like the, the you know, the researcher asking the questions or, or like the big boss, you know, they were just the same with everybody. Mm-hmm. So like when they floated the idea of coming back years later, those people that had got their cups of tea and opened the doors for them and whatever else were right. now the, the big bosses. And they yes. were like, I remember how Gary Barlow, yes. Marco and Robbie Williams, whatever, made me feel when nobody yes. was making mm-hmm. me feel any kind of yeah. way other than just yeah. like used and abused. So yeah, yeah. I, and I think that's probably very similar to you guys, you know, like the reason yeah. people are so open to having you like back, like come back, this big, huge, like comeback is because you were kind and nice and hard work and, and there was no drama. So it's like, yeah, yeah. let's, let's have yeah. like, you <laughs> You're right. back. So I, yeah. I feel like... Yeah. But just totally. rem- remembering where you came from, who you are, and, and being hardworking and kind is is sort of such a big part of it too. It is, and it's yeah, so funny definitely. because we just did a, ra- a radio promo there last week, and one of the guys was like saying, um, "That's you know part of Sony." He was like saying, "Do you know what?" He said, "I'm doing all the rounds," and he said, "What's really obvious is that there's actually so much love for you guys." And I was like, "Oh my yeah. god, that's so lovely! It's so <laughs> so lovely to hear." It was just like, which is, do you know what I mean? Which is, yeah. you can't ask for anything nicer than that, really. No, mm-hmm. and like you are going to remind everybody of like so you you guys were just so unproblematic you know there's no <laughs> yeah, sca- it's true. there's no scandal there's no yeah. secret baby there's no rehab stay it's literally just yeah. like these were four really nice girls who sang really well who loved what they did who made us who made us feel really happy in our teens and 20s and now actually you're just going to take us back to that time and transport us to that lovely nostalgia now that we're in with 30s and 40s so yeah mate like mm. this comeback is going to be absolutely sick birthday's a banger I can't wait to fucking <laughs> listen to it I can't wait to dance to it like thank you nope. so much and good luck uh, thanks for thanks. having us thanks, thanks for amazing. amazing thank you so much Vicky Bye, nice chatting Mwah.